Britain into a, a, a Greece-style social chaos. So that's your prediction. What do you say on your prognosis for the total collapse that you believe will start being triggered in April? And again, quantifying it simply, what a total collapse is. Right. The, uh, I've been sticking to my prediction of total uh, currency collapse by April, anytime between now and April. And I haven't changed my thoughts on that. Uh, the situation, as you pointed out at the top, continues to deteriorate in terms of people recognizing that there is uh, more of a depression going on around the world. In, in the U.S., you have something very deceptive at the moment in that real estate prices are up, let's say, over the past two quarters. But if you look at what that's all about, you find that the hedge fund community, the fast money community, is showing up in Phoenix, in Florida, Detroit. They're throwing money at these properties as flippers uh, to make a quick buck. But there is a, a very concentrated and a very small number of funds. But there is no wide scale housing recovery as such. So that number. So it's is little micro stuff. bubbles here and there. Exactly. A great way to put it. It's a micro bubble. If you look at the stock market today, we're seeing something interesting, Alex, uh, in that the stock market is losing, you know, to, to, to use a Wall Street term, it, it's losing its leadership. So Intel, Microsoft, McDonald's, and General Electric, these are big companies, big capitalized companies. They're all trading down. Google yesterday, of course, came in with bad earnings. The stock dropped 10% in five minutes, right on the opening. You also have Apple Computer now. Uh, is trading down 60 or $70 from its all-time high, and it looks like Apple Computer is going to go through a period of uh, trading down. Now, it's very significant when you're talking about Apple Computer because you're talking about the biggest company in the world by market cap, over $600 billion. It's by far the biggest component of the NASDAQ, which is that huge part of the market in the United States that has the fast growers. or that some Yeah, that's Bernie Madoff's uh, creation. Very loving. Bernie Madoff was one of the was one of the um, chairman at some point of Nasdaq, and he was uh, involved. That's where his platform, where he committed a lot of the fraud that he did commit. But even before Bernie was there, and now after Bernie was there, it's the place where technology companies like Google, Apple, Amazon, and these others go public. That's where they're traded. What's going and on with Facebook? What are these uh, these uh, sell offs of things like Apple? What does that foretell? Well, the uh, Facebook is aligned with a company more, I would say, if you look at a company I've mentioned on this uh, show before, Zynga, the virtual currency and virtual property company. Zynga announced horrible earnings and is crashing down. It's down something like 80 or 90 percent from its IPO, which was only six months ago. So that impacts very negatively on Facebook. Facebook has yet to really come up with a business plan that would indicate that they're going to make some significant money going forward. Uh, so that's a, that's down in the teens again. Went public at 38. It's down below 20. It got to as low as 17 and a half. There's been a report by Janet Tavacoli recently, very respected Chicago-based money uh, manager and analyst who thinks Facebook is going to trade down to five dollars a share. So that would be more than a 90 percent drop from its initial public offering. So that's also very negative for these markets because nothing can go public. Uh, you got the big cap stocks are trading down. Today, of course, is the 25th anniversary of the crash of 1987, which I was there. I participated in that crash. I was working in New York. I know it very well. I sent uh, Chris, your, one of your producers, a video when I was on CBS News being interviewed after the crash of 87. You see Max Kaiser is a 27-year-old stockbroker. It's kind of amusing. Uh, uh, so I tell you what, I want to find that video. Uh, Chris, the main producer, is out because he, he went like you know 20 hours then went home. Uh, and he's coming back tomorrow as we're going to 11 a.m. tomorrow on oh, okay, the 48-hour transmission. But let me just ask you the name of the video, and we'll pull it up. What's the name? It's called Max Kaiser Crash of 1987. My my bit comes in at around two two minutes and 20 seconds. Okay, Max Kaiser, the crash of 87 on YouTube. That'll get it. Yeah. All right, we'll we'll and, pull and that so up. Here we have that. The, that that's the guy. It's a, it's a fun piece. Uh, it goes back 25 years. And when I was working as a stockbroker in New York. Uh, during the crash. But uh, a great uh, story came out today from PIMCO. You know, PIMCO is the biggest bond manager in the world. Bill Gross is, uh, manages uh, hundreds of billions of dollars. He made a comparison between now and 1987 with, with something called portfolio insurance. And I know this very, very well from my days on Wall Street. People with large stock market accounts, you sell them what's called portfolio insurance. You give them the illusion that they only have two or three percent risk in their portfolio by trading options. 
Uh, but of course, when you have so many people doing the exact same trade over billions and hundreds of billions of dollars worth of stocks, you end up with a huge concentration that eventually blows up, as it did in 1987. Now, what we have today in the year 2012 is we have this similar contraption to portfolio insurance. It's called derivatives. And people believe that these derivative contracts are giving them protection on the downside that they can buy these huge positions, and if they hedge their positions using derivatives, that their risk is manageable and quantifiable. And what I can tell you right now, and this is plays into my thesis of between now and April, global currency collapse, is that once again, we will discover that that is impossible to insure everyone's portfolio equally. That's an impossibility, and yet they sell it as, it, as, as it's a possibility, and we're going to see once again a crash, except it'll be 1987, but 20 or 30 times bigger, and it'll be a, this time a currency crash, and it's in the it's baked into the cake, it's, it's in the pipeline. But the thing that'll fix it will be having checkpoints on the highways and TSA groping our families and funding al-Qaeda to attack nations, and then they'll have a fake patsy who they give a visa to and bring into the country try to blow up the Federal Reserve, the poor little sweet Federal Reserve, they would never stage a false flag patsy event. I mean, this is just Max Kaiser. We should be thanking the bankers for what they're doing. America is having a nervous breakdown. The, the TSA events and these fake uh, presidential debates are something you would see in a mental ward. <laughs> suffering from d d deep dementia and uh, psychotropic dementia and, and other mental illnesses. I agree. All right, so it's Have you ever thing. watched a crazy person, say a homeless person, it's very sad, but you sit there maybe in a cafe watching them out the window, and you start feeling crazy watching the craziness? I mean, you know, don't look in the abyss lest you become the abyss. I mean, this is really getting nuts, Kaiser. Well, it's a combination of a mental asylum and a cult, because you also have cult-like qualities. When you have, like Mitt Romney, He's not a psychotic so much as a cult leader. He's like Jim uh, Jones in the cult of Guyana, where he got everyone to drink the, the, uh, the, the Kool-Aid laced with cyanide. And that's what private equity is about. That's where he comes from, the world of private equity, where he, he, he hypnotizes people into believing that by stripping corporations of all their assets and selling them off and firing everybody, that somehow that's good for the, for the, for the economy and good for America. That's like burning down your house and saying, I had to do it because nothing else could have saved the house, so I burned it down. Or America, remember in Vietnam, they had to destroy the village to save the village. You know, Mitt Romney's attitude is we've got to burn down these corporations, strip them of all their assets using private equity to save them. And he wants to take that cult-like mentality and apply it to America. He wants to do a leverage buyout of America, sell all the assets he possibly can to private bankers, save the difference for himself so his net worth goes and have us pay taxes to give him banker bailouts i mean that's important is that's free market well no it's a sideshow the, the point is that mitt romney looks at other oligarchs around the world and he wants to be a 10 to 15 billion dollar player as well he is jealous of the 15 to 20 billion dollar players he's got less than a billion dollars so in his mind He's a shrimp dick, as we used to say on Wall Street. So he's got to really step up his game. So he's f figured out that if he does a leverage buyout of America, he can make himself 10 or $15 billion, which he could if he pulls it off. Uh, on the other side of the aisle, Barack Obama, uh, somebody mentioned on your show earlier, I think it was Gerald Salente, that the Obama deception was a fantastic film. And I, I've said that for the last seven, what, four years, I guess that the Obama deception is the best Alex Jones film because it totally predicted what happened. I myself was taken in by Obama when he was running for president. I gave him the benefit of the doubt, like an idiot. Uh, your film cut through all that, and it's been completely true. He's, he is an absolute a nothing but a puppet, empty suit. He, he, he reneged on every single promise except one. He did buy his kids a dog. Well, and he eats organic but doesn't want us to. You know, I, I watch Obama. He looks very unhealthy now. What is it that happens to presidents where they go gray and they age 20 years in four years? Well, what happens? Do they you know, maybe have their own body scanner there or are aliens in the basement and they replace their brain? I mean, well, I mean, I mean, what's going on here? I have no doubt that being president of the United States is a stressful job. And since you have to be on, uh, on call 24 hours a day, 
I'm pretty sure that the president is on drugs 24 hours a day and that his his entire schedule is medicated so that he is ready to make a decision because at any given moment something might happen and he needs to make a decision on and we saw that with George Bush I think George Bush his reputation for being quote unquote dumb was overplayed I think in his case he was less able to handle the demands of being oh yeah when he was governor he had brown hair he gave pretty good speeches without teleprompters and within about a year in office he was a gibbering uh lobotomy patient right those are the drugs that they have to keep you uh, alert to, to make these decisions and once you enter the presidential bubble you completely lose track with what's happening no no that's just like the ancient chinese bounding people's women uh you know bounding women's feet not letting them walk i think that the whole cloistered inner cult like jfk injecting them with methamphetamine exactly it's well known they absolutely it's your responsibility to get up at 5 a.m we have to have this briefing don't worry sir the air force takes these pills or take them immediately and then huh, those pills may feel horrible don't worry sir we have an injection for you and it's kind of this medical tyranny that's taken over the rest of the west it really takes over the president I really wish in America you had the possibility of a genuine grassroots campaign like a Teddy Roosevelt or somebody who comes up from who really communicates and then becomes elected based on a, a philosophy and an ideology and, an, and conviction that they believe in. But in America today, uh, anyone who comes along like a Ron Paul or even a Ralph Nader, who I think had a lot of good qualities. Uh, you know, they get decapitated by the media, who is, of course, uh, sponsoring the ads. They sponsor the I hear you, Max. Stay there. We found that two and a half minute clip with uh, Dan Rather talking about you. I come in at, I come in at two, two minutes and. Yeah, yeah, we're going to play the whole thing because it shows these stockbrokers acting like five year old kids with like six cigars in their mouth and stuff. This is who runs things now a bunch of guys trying to show off to each other. The worst drought in 50 years continues, and the first six months of 2012 marks the hottest half year on record. 78% of the Midwest Corn Belt is in drought conditions. Not only corn, but soy, alfalfa, fruits, vegetables, and wheat are all impacted, raising prices. The cost to feed livestock is forcing farmers and ranchers out of business, blowing up your food prices. The only strategy to counter this is to freeze your food cost at today's prices by getting your own supply of foods from eFoods Direct now. As the price of raw ingredients increases, eFoods will have to raise prices too. Now is the time to get your supply. I recently increased my supply from eFoods Direct because we have all known this was coming. You know about their delicious long-term storable foods. The fact is you can eat at any time to save money today. And because it stores for 25 years, you're locking in today's prices and avoiding the rising food cost. Don't wait. Call 800-409-5633 or go to eFoodsDirect.com forward slash Alex. Call 800-409-5633 or eFoodsDirect.com forward slash Alex. You can bet your life on eFoods Direct. I don't mean to be nosy, but do you have the 37 food items you can't get in the coming disaster and may not survive without? As you already know, something big is about to hit the U.S. and you have got to be prepared. Did you know that your local grocery store only keeps a three-day supply of food on hand? So if there's any interruption in our fragile food supply chain or even a hint of a crisis, then the three-day supply at your local grocery store will be gobbled up by the mob in minutes and you and your family could be in serious trouble. That's why my friend just created a free video at 37items.com that reveals the 37 critical items you should hoard now before it's too late. Go watch the important video at 37items.com to discover the 37 things you can't buy after a disaster and may not survive without. I'm not sure how long the video will be online, so go to 37items.com before it's gone forever. Again, that's 37items.com. You know what happens to your digestive health around the holidays? Right. Unusual schedules and foods you don't normally eat can cause upset stomach and indigestion. But you can prepare your digestive tract with Pro-EM-1 Probiotic Cleanse from Terraganics.com. Pro-EM-1 is all natural and made with certified organic ingredients. It contains no genetically modified ingredients or preservatives and has no animal products, wheat, soy, dairy, or gluten. Pro-EM-1 does not require refrigeration, so you can take it with you over the river and through the woods to Grandma's house. Pro-EM-1 supports a healthy, regular digestive system, supports weight loss, and improves absorption of food nutrients. Improve your digestion and keep off those extra pounds with Pro-EM-1 Probiotic Cleanse. Call or click Terraganics.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. 
Toll free, 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Terra Gannix, life's getting better. Folks, I'm not going to PBS this and, you know, every month sit here and beg for money on air. It's a listener's idea. Money Bomb's great. We raise about $200,000. We usually raise about three hundred dollars to 500000 over a day. We're doing a 48-hour. We need this to get extra satellite uplinks in the systems we need. It's very expensive. I mean, we're coming from nothing here, up to 15 million people a week. And, you know, we have sponsors and things we sell, but sometimes to expand, we need the support. So I want to thank all of you that have donated and ask others to donate today. Uh, if you can, at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com or 888-253-3139. Now, if you're watching us at PrisonPlanet.tv right now, we're going to your calls in the next hour with Max Kaiser, and we've got an Ask Christie coming up. We've got a whole laundry list of amazing guests after that. Look at the full roster and send out the free video feed, everybody you know. You can at least email it out to people or post it on your Facebook or Twitter at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. We can punch it up on screen. But if you look on screen now, if you're a radio listener, um, again, just go over to InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com, and then you can see everything that's on screen right there, punching that up. Uh, it's flashback. Max Kaiser discusses the 87 stock market crash on Dan Rather's show. But I want to play the whole clip because you can see the still there at 17 seconds. You know, stockbrokers laughing with six cigars in their mouth, L little kids making jokes. And, and these are the people that are in control now, disconnected from reality, taught eugenics is great, taught it's good to rob everyone, taught it's good to cheat everyone, and Max can attest to all this. We're going to play this clip and then get Max's take on it and then go to the next hour and take your calls. Uh, but let's uh, go ahead now. Uh, and again, if you're listening on AM and FM, support those local stations. And if your station, you know, uh, doesn't carry the, the next hour, Again, it's important. The video feed is at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com or InfoWars.com to continue watching. But here's flashback. Max Kaiser discusses the 87 stock market crash on Dan Rather's show. Here it is. This massacre on Wall Street did a lot more than shake up political fortunes. It taught an entire class, a generation, that on the stock exchange, it is no fairy tale when the bull turns into a bear. Charles Osgood reports. For the young and upwardly mobile, the five-year bull market brought more success than some of them could handle. The music was fast and heady, and they thought it would never stop. But then the other day, it did stop, at least for a while. And there was this sinking feeling, this sudden realization that the stock market was downwardly mobile, and so were they. I think we were living on a blind faith that uh, somehow this would not happen. Um, it did happen, and I don't think, and the repercussions of it right now is too early to tell just how it will affect those involved. The yuppie mentality has been punched, maybe knocked down, but the uh, fight is still early. I think they're going to realize, having been punched in this manner, that the security that they felt isn't really as solid as they believed. These people are VPs. They're 28, 29 years old. They've never seen a downside of the market. They've, they're not seasoned. They've never seen something like hap what happened on Monday. Brokers say older people living on their savings and investments were not so badly hurt this time because they knew. They knew it had happened before. But of course, that was way back in what to the yuppies is ancient history. There's no way they can handle a real collapse of the economy comparable to anything that we had, that we had in the 30s because their lifestyle has been totally different. Well, he said it. People of my generation have not, uh, we didn't live through the Depression, but I think now saving a penny uh, becomes more important. Even though the market has come back in the last two sessions, the fast and fancy cars don't seem so irresistible anymore. Don't count all your chickens before they're hatched. Don't be calling up the Porsche dealership. And the next day you have to call up the uh, Ford dealership. Because we had an ad in the paper for a car, and uh, Monday morning we got ton of calls. By Monday afternoon, nobody was calling. You know, I'm like um, a lot of other people, and I have to admit, I like to live beyond my means, but, um, you know, I think twice about making large ticket purchases now. The plight of the yuppie does not seem tragic to everybody, not to Nobel Prize winning economist Solo. Sweet are the uses of adversity, and uh, one of the things it might do is make uh, uh, engineers out of yuppies. And not to New York broker Max Kaiser. But the idea of a yuppie, you know, money uh, without stopping, that, that's not the case anymore. And I'm, I personally, I'm glad to see it. I'm sick of yuppies. No more yuppie chow, no more yuppie magazines, no more yuppie clubs, no more yuppies. Thank you for listening. Cue it up to the beginning of him. Visit GCNlive.com today.
If you want an American company with American products made by Americans, here is the Cal Ben Soap Company. Alex and his staff have used these pure soap products for years. These all-natural soaps are made from the highest quality vegetable and coconut oils that are earth-friendly and safe. See them on the web at 5starsoap.com or call 800-340-7091 for a free catalog. Buy the one to two month sample package and enjoy soaps that are twice as good as what you're using now. Or save big with a one to two year supply of soaps for all your cleaning needs. This is an amazing deal. You can save thousands of dollars and you will love the way real soap makes you feel. See them on the web at 5starsoap.com or call 800-340-7091 for a free catalog. Coast to Coast, direct from Austin. You're listening to the Alex Jones Broadcasting Network. Network. engineers out of yuppies and not to new york broker max kaiser but the idea of a yuppie you know money uh, without stopping that that's not the case anymore and i'm uh, personally i'm glad to see it i'm sick of yuppies no more yuppie chow no more yuppie magazines no more yuppie clubs no more yuppies great that's the only thing we accomplished if anything we got rid of the yuppies and i'm i'm happy about it <laughs> for lots of fast living young people monday's stock market jolt was like a sudden heart attack a heart attack, they say, is nature's way of telling you to slow down. 